Allah will hold his tongue from being able to say shahada at the time of death. Let me tell you one of the most horrifying things to see. And anyone who's been around dying people will tell you that they've seen it. Is a person who's dying and who's still fully conscious and someone's telling them to say la ilaha illallah and they're going And it's as if you can see someone holding their tongue and saying you're not going to be able to say it. No, no, you don't get this gift today. Yes, a person dying and someone saying to him say ashhadu la ilaha illallah and he says I can't say what you're telling me to say. It's happened. It's happened. Number one is the belittling of sins. It is the thing that the Prophet ﷺ described as a man who goes and who keeps putting small branches into a fire until the fire grows and consumes him. He ends up setting himself ablaze by throwing these small branches, the small sins. Why? Because the small sins by nature go without incident in your life. Minor sins don't cause major ruptures in your life. And so it becomes easier to engage them on a consistent and regular basis. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kalla bal rana ala qulubihim. That over time, the heart stains, 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 stains until the heart becomes completely poisoned, locked, and unable to benefit from the Quran, unable to benefit from the Salah, unable to connect in dua, completely disconnected connected from worship. But Imam al-Ghazai mentions of the belittling of sins. Imagine taking a stone and dropping a little drop of water on the same place over and over and over again. And what ends up happening? Eventually the stone will completely be destroyed. And that is the likeness of the small sins, the habitual sins, the ones that you do on a regular basis. Because minor sins are also rarely going to be called out by someone else. That's on you to look to yourself and say, what are the invisible barriers between me and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that even other people are really not going to note for me? The things that I regularly watch, the things that I regularly say, the things that I regularly do. That's something that's gonna come through your introspection, not through anybody else. And with every age and every circumstance and every time the nature of those sins is going to change but shaitan knows what he's doing he pivots to your weaknesses and gives you another rope another trail another way away from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to disconnect you from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the second one that the scholars mention which is a significant one subhanallah especially in this day and age is violating the honor of your fellow brother and sister is the quickest way to distance yourself from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala altogether why do you think the Prophet sallallahu in Hajj was talking to the Sahaba and saying you see this Kaaba what's more sacred than this your brother's blood money honor is more sacred than this Kaaba to you could you ever imagine yourself doing something to this Kaaba the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he mentions that verily a slave will say one word. He doesn't really consider it. I Meaning it's just something that slips. Why? Because it became a habit. I always talk like this. I don't even recognize how I talk anymore. He doesn't see an issue with it. You always talk like that. You talk about people, you talk in this way, you talk that way, you type this way. You just have a long tongue and you got long fingers. Always, always talking, 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 talking. He's justified it or she's justified it in her mind that it's okay to talk this way and that's not really going to have an effect on my spirituality or my standing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet sallallahu mentioned that that causes a person to fall into the fire, causes you to go face first into the fire. You just talk, 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 type, 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 talk, 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 type, 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 type. Think about what you're doing. When the Prophet talked about the severity of riba, of interest and usury with all of its branches, the least of it being compared to zina and incest, adultery. The last thing the Prophet says, the worst form of riba, the essence of riba, of usury, is the honor of your brother and sister. Your tongue, being long with your brother and your sister. Yaqul Imam ibn al-Jawzi rahimahullah ta'ala that whoever lets their tongue loose on the honor of their brothers and sisters, Allah will hold his tongue from being able to say shahada at the time of death. May Allah protect us. Let me tell you one of the most horrifying things to see. And anyone who's been around dying people will tell you that they've seen it. Is a person who's dying and who's still fully conscious and someone's telling them to say la ilaha illallah and they're going and it's as if you can see someone holding their tongue and saying, you're not going to be able to say it. No, no, you don't get this gift today. That tongue was too loose with the honor of your brothers and sisters. Allah Azza wa Jal holds back that tongue from saying the shahada at the time of death. Yes, a person dying and someone saying to him, say, ashhadu la ilaha illallah. And he says, I can't say what you're telling me to say. It's happened where a person feels held back. 
Why? Did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala catch that person by surprise? No, your tongue was too loose. Fingers were too loose. Talking about other people. SubhanAllah, Imam al-Ghazali rahimahullah says about this disease of backbiting. Every single age, every single social class is purged with this disease. There's the ghiba of the 16-year-old and the ghiba of the 60-year-old. There's the ghiba of the poor person, the backbiting of the rich person. But it is a disease that plagues every single class of people and that's why it is so warned against. Your tongue is loose with the honor of people. It might come back to grab you on the day of judgment. And that's a jail, that's a prison that comes down at that time. So fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with that tongue. SubhanAllah. And Imam Sufyan al-Thawri rahimahullah talks about the disconnect in this life that he felt from one of his ibadat. He said, I was forbidden from Qiyamul layl for six months. Why? I saw a man crying in the masjid and I said to myself, he's not crying for Allah. That's a person who spoke to themselves. What about a person who speaks to others? Oh, you see that brother, mashallah, making a announcements, you see that brother doing this, you see that sister, don't they always love to do that? Hmm, you know how they are, always find their way there, always do this, always do that. Can you imagine if Sufyan al the righteous man is saying, I was forbidden for six months for something I said inside, then what is the crime of a person who actually speaks that? to someone else. That's a barrier that you're putting between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Dear brothers and sisters, is this meant to scare us? In a way, yes, because we need to be afraid of these sins. Otherwise, we fall into muhaqqarat al We fall into the belittling of these sins. But the only thing I want to put across to each and every single one of us is that these are things that are dealt with through introspection. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made some of the causes of disconnect from Him more subtle, but He has not made them invisible to a sincere, striving, introspective Muslim. Ya Allah, I seek your forgiveness. Help me remove the barriers, that which I know about and that which I don't know about, so that I can flow with La ilaha illallah with khushur in this life, and at the time of death say La ilaha illallah with ease, and then in my grave say La ilaha illallah with ease, and be raised up on the day of judgment with La ilaha illallah.